now. We're in Cornwall, in the middle of Bodmin Moor, and we've been requested down here for a particularly special challenge. And it's not to actually find the beast of Bodmin Moor, because I think I've already found that. <laughs> now, oh, exactly where is this challenge now? Well, I've got to admit that I got the scales wrong, and I think we've about got two miles to go. Two more miles to go? It's not far for a man of your stature. I'll be tired before I even start. Is this it, Al? I think so. Oh, the caravans look a bit worn out, mate. Yeah. Is this the job? <laughs> well, you're the one with a map. I mean... Well, it, it doesn't looks, say anything about what we're doing like on it. the map. I think this might be our man. Good morning. Ah, uh, morning, Tony. Ah, you must be Rex. Right. How are you? Very well, thanks. This is Big Al. Hello, um, Rex. Nice to meet you. Now, you've got a particularly interesting challenge for us, haven't you? Uh, yeah, my uh, little pig shed here. Um, this? Yeah. A when, pig shed? Yeah, when we came 27 years ago here, yeah, there was pigs in here. And uh, it was a bit a bit further out than it is now, so we chopped it down a bit. But I ate my neck doing a job. Arthritic neck now, there's a lintel over there. And uh, I was resting it on my head, and it crushed the bones a little bit. And that put a stop to the job, really. Well, it would do. Uh, yeah. Well, here you built your own house, or rebuilt it. Yeah. This big house oh, no, here? Uh, he's built from scratch, actually. Um, the big, the, the taller part is all been from below the ground up. And you built that yeah. yourself? Uh, yeah, with a, just a little bit of help from a, a friend of mine. That was a good mason. So you've got some good building knowledge? Uh, yeah, a fair bit. Yeah, I used to be a maintenance manager with a big store, so... Um, oh, that's very handy, because we're going to need a bit of assistance. Yeah. So what exactly is it you want us to do with this? So well, it was a piggery. It was a piggery, yeah. Well, I've got a couple of old caravans there that we lived in when we built the house. We saw those when we yeah. came through. Yeah, they a bit, are a bit, a bit rough, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I want them to disappear, but I've got a lot of tools and things in there that, that want to live in the pig shed. So once I've got somewhere sound, I can get rid of one of them and move stuff around. I, I can't get rid of it until I can get my tools somewhere. <laughs> right, I see. So you want us to rebuild this? Yeah, the roof, windows, uh, oh, this well, gable this... end. Yeah. Doors. Completely refurbish it, so to Yeah, speak. that's right, yeah. Is that a um, big enough, small enough task? Well, it's a big enough challenge for me, yeah. yeah. Should be interesting. Mm. So we're just going to make this purely into a, a work it. store, if you like. That's right, yeah. I still call it the pig shed, I think. Yeah? Or King Arthur's Hall. H-O-L-E. Well, that's a nice, uh, interesting. King Arthur's Hall. Well, Excalibur. There's a nice ring to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Excalibur, mm. the sword is supposed to be in Dosmary Pole, just the other side of that big hill. First thing is, this has got to come off this lintel. We're going to get rid of that. Yeah. And we're going to put a new stone lintel. He's got one buried in the ground somewhere he wants us to dig up and use. Yeah. Now, this one looks a bit worse for wear. We could put this as an old ship's timber or something. Put that here, get yeah. rid of this, because that's not really going to carry any weight. We want the proper stone lintel here for this gable end, OK? Yeah. Right, now, moving on to here, we need to take this coping sort of stone off here and then raise the whole gable slightly and then put these back on and then that will establish the same angle of pitch for the roof but then that will allow us to actually build these walls up a bit taller yeah you'd be all right in here as it is actually <laughs> now we raise this up a bit higher and then we can put the the wall plates on yeah and as i say retain the same angle for the roof yeah and then we make the roof and fit the roof. What about the windows? I mean, that's a door, that is. Mm. With Georgian wire glass, pattern glass, which I haven't seen that before. Well, they're not going to be anything like standard, so why don't we just make them? Well, you could be making them while I'm actually doing the stonework, couldn't you? Yeah. But before we do anything else, I think what we need to do is clear out all this junk. Oh, look. Should we save these? It's only a little house, so I need little chairs. One for you and one for me. Go on, I'll dare you. <laughs> You're gonna have to go on a diet. Oh. <laughs> right. Now we've cleared this pit out down here. We're gonna actually reuse this timber. And these are old ships' timbers, aren't they? They are, yeah. So we're gonna take this to one side, keep it, and then use it on the side window. But we need to take these old windows out because they look ugly. We just drop that down here. Up. Yep. If 
you take the saw and cut it. While I finish off sorting out the old pig shed, Alan's gone off to a local timber yard with Rex. They're looking for some pressure-treated timber for the roof and prepared softwood for the windows. So you've got a friend here, haven't you? Yeah, he's a yard foreman here. Yeah, Shall we go is. and find him then, and yeah. then we can sort some timber out? Right. OK. Yeah. Now, what Rex is after, and I'm after today, is some fifth-grade softwood. Yeah. Yep. Now, to anybody watching, fifth-grade softwood is... There's a fourth, then there's a fifths, and then there's unsorted. And the unsorted is the best. Now, we want the fifths. Um, do you stock it? Yes, we're, you're, in the, you're in the fifth shed here. This, yeah. is, this is all fifths joinery right. going through here. This yard also has a system for pressure treating timber. There's a 32 foot tank which has a rail bridge attachment, and all the timbers is stacked on those little bogies. And yes. The whole timber pack is pushed into the plant, and with that, the door's sealed. Yeah. You put a vacuum on the tank, which sucks all the air out of the tank and out of the timber. Right. And um, then you release the storage tank. Yes. And that draws all the fluid, which is the tantalising fluid, into the tank. Yes. The liquid falling from the storage tank completely fills the pressure vessel. Yes. And then you close that down, open up another valve, which forces the liquid into the tank so you're forcing literally water against water yeah. and it's got nowhere else to go except into the wood. It totally fills the tank and fills all the pores in the wood. I see. And how long will the tunnelist treatment last in the timber? Well, they, they guarantee it for a minimum of 15, but if you do increase the ingredients, then it will go up to 25. I see. Thanks for explaining that. Mm. We want some of this timber. We've got a lot to do, Rex. Yeah, we have. Um, Tommy on. will be wondering what's happened to us. <laughs> but if we can get some of this through to the planer yep, and get it no all problem. sorted out and clear off. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Ian. Okay. Cheers, Ian. Cheers. So we'll use prepared softwood for the window frames. That's my first job. And the pressure-treated timber will work a treat for the roof. Now, this is the local building sand, which is really rather coarse. Now, the only problem when you're using this for building is it's what we call hungry sand. As soon as you make the mix up and you apply this to the stone or the brickwork, for some reason, it just sucks the water straight out of it. This can't hold the moisture very long. So what we use to sort that out, modern days, is a plasticizer. And it's just a chemical additive that gives it more elasticity and keeps it alive longer, enabling you to use it. In the old days, they used to use lime. So you just put a little bit of a splash of that in it. Don't need much. Put a bit of dye in as well. What for? What do you want some dye for? It's so that the, the cement, instead of looking white in the wall with the stones, yeah. it'll more resemble the old cob which it originally would have been built with. You know, a muddy clay dungy mixture. And it gives, you know, it just gives it a brown because this sand's so white. It just gives it a... It looks nicer in a new job. Right, I understand what you mean. So you're using russet brown just to tone it down yeah, a little? Yeah, that's it, yeah. I'd rather you use that than dunk. Oh, yeah, dear. yeah, well, three or four of them. Three or Ten four minutes. of these? Yeah, yeah. Ah. And you should really put this in at the wet, the water stage. Yeah, that's right. We haven't put any cement in yet, so we're still OK. Now here's a useful tip. If you're taking down stone or brickwork and you're going to rebuild it, you think you can remember the pattern, but just in case, as always happens, you forget once you take it down, take a little Polaroid uh, shot of it first. There you are, the perfect plan. As an added precaution to the photograph, we number the capping stones so when they go back they'll be in the perfect sequence. What I'm doing here, I've got the windows to make for this end elevation here. There's also one to make for around the side. But what I've got to do is an opener on the left hand side. Because we've got so much to do on this challenge, I'm going to mitre the corners of the frames on all four sides and mason mitre in there. This will be a little better explained when you see me doing it screwed up and glued and then this sash 
will be, or the casement, I should say, is going to be made after all the windows together. One tip for you, if you're ever doing this, where you're going to form the rebate for the glass to go in, put a red line on it, red for rebate. And you always oppose them like that, and then you always know where you are. <sighs> How's it going, Al? All right. All right. Oh. Time for a cup of tea, I think. Fancy one? Yeah, I'm going for that. Firstly, I'd like to know whose idea it was to take this job on. It's that big owl. The weight of these stones is unbelievable. So we've taken them off, and then I've had to find two stones, two corner stones, the sort of triangular shape, like a right angle triangle. They'll give me a straight edge on the corner, but run me in level to run up the pitch. Then whatever the thickness of that stone is, how much we've raised it, say eight inches. Had to do the same with a piece of stone that side. And then of course we had to do the same with a piece of stone in the middle. So make sure that we're elevating the whole thing at the same pitch. So now I've put this line up so I can uh, build the rest of the stone in to match this. So that when we come to do the roof, the angle will be the same, both sides. What do you want? I was just. I knew trouble was I was coming. just going to tell you what a lovely job you're making. It looks what you after? There. I'm not after anything, honestly. Every time I come to talk to him, and I've got a cup of tea in my hand, he says, "What am I after?" I think that's very good, and I'm picking up tips here. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, let me give you the best one of all. Don't next do it time in the first someone, place. <laughs> next time someone suggests to you that you put like pieces of stone that weigh 200 weight, 12 foot in the air, say, "I know a man who can." Right. Okay. And point them in the opposite direction to me. Just consider, when, at least when this end's done, you've only got one more to do. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to make a, a window is an overall width and an overall height. What we also need is the side pieces, which are the jams. Now, on the jams, we've got to put in a rebate. And as you can see here, the scabby bits, that's where it's been handled badly. So you want to try and get rid of that. You don't want that showing on the window. So we'll form the rebate down that edge. So if you've got dead knots, splits or damaged edges, you form the rebate with that. Now I'm just going to write uh, 25 on that because that's the depth of the rebate in. Mark everything up so you don't forget where you are. Now we put a mitre on the end of that. And then the overall height of the window is measured from that point down, and these happen to be 755 millimetres, to there. And then we mitre, making sure that the mitre is facing the same way as the other end. And that is going to be cut off, and that is going to be cut off. And that's the size of the jam, which will then be laid onto the end of the window and fixed up. This will be cut off and that will be cut off and they'll meet together to form 90 degrees. So once you've done that on all of them, you can start cutting. We'll be here all year if I have to sort the stones out on my own. So I've roped in Rex's daughter Becky and her mates to give me a hand. Do you know I con this little lot here, you know? I said, was anyone interested in the stones? And they all put their hands up. I said, we'll form a chain gang. <laughs> when my dad was rebuilding the house, I was about 13. My brother was about 11, because we'd just moved down here. So we were sort of helping out as much as we can with, you know, the little bricks and mixing a bit of cement and helping to support beams and stuff. Um, possibly getting in the way more than we were helping, I don't know. But... Um, it was a great experience, living in the caravans in the summer, living in the holiday cottage in the winter while the house was being built. We used to, we used to have to use other people's houses for baths, and <laughs> borrow the farmhouse toilet, but it was fantastic. I think he drew all the plans by himself, a bit of, a bit of help with some people he knew. Um, he did all the plumbing, he did all the electrics, he basically built it from scratch apart from the roof. Pig shed is possibly about 150 years old, possibly more. And it's been, because we don't need to live in it, it's been the last bit to be finished. 
it's going to be good. It's, yeah, be well worth it all just to get it done. <laughs> What we've got here, mason mitres. Now, that line there is the depth of the rebate. But what we've got to do is have the mullion coming in this way, a bit like this. So, what it'll be is that dropping into there, like so. Now the idea of this is, this is the face side, this side of the shed, because that's the side we've got to make look good. Then we have the back side, which is on this side, which you do as best you can to match in. And then fill the middle with all the offcuts and bits of rubbish. And what you do, pl spread plenty of mortar in between, it ties the whole lot together. Originally this would have been a dry stone wall, that's how it would have been built. But over the years people have rebuilt sections of it and they've used mortar. And Rex wants some fancy pointing done, which is fine by me, because the thing about fancy pointing is it can cover up a bit of average stonework and make it look really good. An important thing to remember when you're building any natural stone walling, especially on a wall the size of this, the width of this, is although you build two skins, one face side and the back side, and then you infill the middle, every so often you're going to need to tie both sides through with like a header stone. Same as you do in brickwork when you tie both leaves of brickwork together. And this will tie both sides of the stone together. What you put in the middle, all down here, doesn't really matter. That can be just backfill, mix it, mix it with a bit of mortar and the whole thing will tie in like a bit of concrete, it'll go off. But it's essential that you put some of these in as you build up the wall. I know they're heavy, but it's something, if you're going to build a stone wall, then you have to put them in. We've cleaned out the trench for the mullion to come into place and that slots in there like so. The next cut I've got to make along here with the saw is to form the rebate. Now, the rebate is to house the glass. The glass goes in, the bead goes in at the back of it and holds it in place when it's been nailed and that's what we're forming now. Time to assemble one of the windows now. Jams, jams, sill, head. What we've got to do is bring those together like so. But we're going to glue them and we're going to screw them. Put plenty of glue on and keep it around the edges. Follow the shape, shape of the timber. And then plenty in the middle. It doesn't matter if it squeezes out. Now, you bring those together like that but the key to this because it's not being clamped is to move that back about an eighth of an inch so that the mitre's off and the reason for that is when you pull these screws in it pulls that timber down I'll show you There you go, one of the windows done, nice heavy section, 
mitred, no mortises, no tenons. Do it on a workbench at home. I'm pleased with that. Do you reckon then, Tommy? I'm framed. Well, do you know what? I reckon if you keep practising, you could become a professional with that. Was that Very a compliment? Good. Yeah. Just Excellent. keep watching me and you'll learn all you need to know. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> we haven't had a bad day, really. No. First day. Nice weather. We? Clearing all the rubbish. Right, setting it all out. And you've made the window, of course. I thought you've had both of them fit today, but you've had a, an easy day. Yeah, I thought you'd get the other side of that gable done as well, but there you all go. Right. Okay, all right, so we're both a bit behind. <laughs> Tomorrow morning I'm going to build that gable up. Yeah. And then I'll start bringing in both sides. You can make the other window, and then we can start talking about the roof. Mm hmm but there's one thing I want to work out about tomorrow. What are you doing? Well, we're finished for the day. Oh, that's men at work, right? Men at work. Now, if you turn it that way, you know what that means? Men going down the pub. Come on, Arrow. <laughs> now, what we need to do is work out... You should keep this nice and cool today because yeah. it's yeah. very hot. It certainly is. Good morning. Welcome to day two of Tommy Walsh's challenge. Our uh, challenge, me and Big Al. We're in Bodmin Moor in Cornwall. Yes. Where the beast is. And our <laughs> challenge <laughs> is to rebuild this piggery and turn it into a tool store and workshop. Now, we've managed so far to build the gable end and make two windows. No, I've made one window. Make one window. Two more to do. Yeah. But one's a little one. Well, I think as time's knocking on, I'd better get started. What are you going to do? Make another window, in, but have a cup of tea first, I think. <laughs> no change there. That's some bean. You made a lovely job of these, I've got to say that. Oops. That's pulled her in nicely, that is. Yeah. It's a clever little tip, you see. When you actually start screwing them, you have them slightly... Obtuse. Yeah, obtuse, yeah, obtuse, obtuse. And then when you've actually... When it pulls in the screw, it slides that back into the perfect spot. Mm. Good little tip, that. He's good, this man. Rex built his own home, and he would have finished the old pig shed too if he hadn't injured himself while he was building. When we first came, 15 years ago, Everything seemed, the pace of life seemed so slow. And, and instincts want you to speed things up a bit. But um, I've just resigned myself to it, it's great. It's nice being a bit slowly. The style, lifestyle's a lot less hassle, less stressful. And a lot of our friends thought it was, um, you know, quite brave and adventurous to uproot Jackie Jobin, take your kids off to the middle of nowhere, caravan in a field. Um, a toilet was all in the ground for the first well, 12 months, we never had water, not pipes water, till I dug for it, and um, didn't have electricity. It was an old engine generator that I used to charge a battery up so the kids could have one hour's television and I could have one hour's television late on the night to relax to. Um, but things have just gone up and up and up. Does it fit? I haven't tried it yet, but what I have done, there's some uh, stonework sticking out of this little cement rebate, so I've got to lift it down from above then the rebate at the back of the window should allow it to go past. Oh, what? Ah, oh, look at that. That's very impressive. Mr. Hurd? Do you like that? Yes. I do as well. Do you reckon you could possibly be related to all our friends in the field back there? What, you mean I'm a bit of an old cow? No, no, no. there's a herd of them over there. And just as a footnote, always remember, whenever you're going to put any timber in outside or inside, give it a coat of preservative before you actually finish it. 
Next job on the agenda for me is to find Tommy a lintel. Can't find one anywhere, but I can find a big gatepost just here. So it's just going to have to do. Now, a spade is a fantastic piece of kit, but it does have its limitations. You're right there, Rex. Yeah. Not, I'm doing the pretty bits. I enjoy this. I don't want to get any mortar in your eyes. You enjoy pointing? Yeah, love it. See, Not, not putting it in the wall, but doing the, the artistic bit afterwards. Oh, making it look like Ansel and Gretel's stuff. house, yeah. A lot of people don't enjoy doing pointing or working with stone. Or I love it. I yeah. find it very relaxing to sit there and I can point all day long. Yeah. That post's a little bit heavy and substantial, so I've had to go for something a little bit more robust to do the job. Big Alan. Is there no end to this man's talents? Come on, Alan. Now, this is one heavy... Oh! One heavy piece of stone. That must weigh about a ton, that hell. You reckon? Yeah, I'd say so. Have we got any scales? We'll lift it. <laughs> we'll just lift it, put it on the bar from scales and see if it weighs a ton. Yeah. Take my word for it. It's heavy. Now, how are we going to... What have you planned to get this up on top of there? These uh, pallet tines, get them over... Right. ...onto the deck, lower this down onto them, lift it back up and lift it into position. Yeah, the only problem with that is, that, story, that theory is, that's really the side we want down and that's the side we want up. Well, will it twist on its end? I know, you might be dreaming, but... Well, it might be a fan of the 60s, I don't know. <laughs> right, it's late in the day, we're tired. We could give it a turn, you want to try a turn? Yeah. Oh, it's not in any... any humour for turning, is it? No. Next time <laughs> someone comes up with an idea like this, send them down to Builders Merchants to get an ordinary concrete lintel. Yeah, it's going. I mean, Wrong way. Why have we got to put half a mountain on top of this? I don't know. That's it. And then you can go back and go under it with the forks. Yeah, don't go away. Have you seen the views over here? You won't be seeing them much longer if you don't hurry up and get back here. You know what's going to happen now. Oh, dear! I mean, if you can't manage it... I'll get someone in who can. <laughs> Better go and fetch him then, haven't we? <laughs> Shall I get you another piece of wood? Yeah, so we can double. You'll injure yourself, don't you, don't you? Like that. I wonder who's going to break the news to Rex. Now, what sort of excuse can we make up? Um, My foot slipped. No, say, let's say that the digger had a flat tyre. Rex. Hello, chaps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, we've got some good news and we've got bad some news. bad news. Well, the good news is that we've actually got the stone out of the ground. Right. And the bad news is, have you Steve. got any super glue? It's in two pieces, I'm afraid. Uh, cracked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, let's borrow Mark one off my next door neighbour. He's got a couple. Has he? Mate, let's have one, yeah. Oh, oh. you're a... Yeah? You're taking it like a true soldier. Oh, no, it's all right. I'll make a garden bench out of that one. <laughs> yeah. You crack the smaller piece another time. Yeah. And we can mount, the, mount what's left onto two smaller pieces. So you'll have a garden seat. See, it's all turned out well in the yeah. end. Thank goodness for nice neighbours especially those who donate replacement lintels. 
That'll do with that, yeah. I don't really want to get in there in case she goes over. No, no, no. What about the slider along? Yeah, it's catching this now. That's it. You're there. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we got this here now. You and me both. You know, this has put us about, <coughs> what, a good half a day behind? We've got shed loads to do, you know, now. Half a day. Yeah, so I don't think it'll be any down the pub for you tonight. As soon as it's dark, I'm down there. <laughs> well, we've got and a few you can hours of light, yeah. bet your bottom dollar that he's five minutes in front of me as well. No, no. I'm not falling for that trick again. <laughs> that means I always get the beer. <laughs> now, we've got the window in. We've got the lintel one. All right, the second lintel, because the first one wouldn't fit. Too many pieces. The other two windows are made. Yeah. The gable end's finished over there. I think I might just carry on and build these corners up so it makes sure this is stable. Slave driver. Come on. Day three, we're in the middle of Bobby Moore deep in the heart of Cornwall. Now, we're a bit behind, about half a day behind, because we had a bit of a problem with the lintel. It doesn't really work when it's broken in two, but enough of that. Today, we've finally got the lintel in, and today we're going to try and build the gable end, get all the stonework finished, and what are you going to do? Casement to make for this. Yeah. Little window to make for the porthole up that side. Yeah. Uh, door. Door. Oh, Hopefully yes, today, door. a door. Door. It's a bit drafty without the door. It is. And uh, then what? Help you. And then we've got to think about setting the roof out when the gable's up. Well, forget about helping me. Get on with the roof and then I'll come and join you. Yeah, all right. That's fine. All right, so do you think we should go and have a wash first and a cup of tea before we start? <clears throat> well, you certainly need a wash. <laughs> We the frames made, but we've got to make the opening casement. This is the casement material, and I've taken a rebate out to accept the glass and the beading, just as I did on the big window. What I've got to do, though, is take the overall width measurement and height measurement of the casement. I'm going to be making the casement in the same manner as the window frame, with mitred corners, so the mitres will follow through onto the casement as well. What you've got to do, though, little trick, save yourself a load of work. When you're measuring the casement, Whatever the measurement is, you want to reduce it by six millimetres because that allows for the hinge and stops the inside edge of the casement from fouling the edge of the jam or mullion. Now, when you countersink these, because the screws are going to be showing on the outside of the wood, if you have got any fitting to do, this deep countersink will accept the screw in a long way and you can still run your plane over without catching your blade and ruining it. We've got all the components cut. All I've got to do now is put them together, glue them and screw them. Right, well, that's the casement made. One quick pointer for you. When you use the glue on here, make sure it's waterproof PVA and not the interior stuff, because it'll just break down and fall apart. Moment of truth. You do realise this is live, never been tried. I've got a little bit of fitting on that. Now, this is not a wooden television mast. What this is, I've got to get a level line from the top of the ridge over there to this side so I can build, set up my line for the gable end to match that one perfectly. So we put this bit of timber up here, level and plumb, and then with a the spirit level, I'll, I'll get the, the height for that side on here, this mark, then I'll put a saw cut in there where that mark is, and then I'll bring my 
Ricky's line from that side through the saw cut down the other side and that will give me the perfect frame to build within to match the other side. Now this is how you get the gable in this end to match the other end. Go through here. Now that saw cut I made, you just feed the line through Pull it tight. Down over this corner. Just a, a little tap. Bring that over in line. We're going to see how that looks. If you look through the line towards the other gable, you can see it parallels it perfectly. So, Rex, what's the reason behind calling this, this X Piggery King Arthur's Hole? Well, if you've got a tin tagel, that's where uh, King Arthur legends abound. They've got an old Methodist chapel there and did a few changes, put a few sorts of armour in and call it King Arthur's Hall, H A L. -L. Right. Well, Dosmary Pole, which is just over the hill at the back, is where his sword was supposed to be. Excalibur went in the lake at the end, well, that's where the Lady of the Lake was supposed to be. So, if that's where his sword went the day after the battle, the battle must have been around here somewhere. Yeah. So I reckon he stayed in this shed that night. This is where he holed up for the night. So I'm going to start a new legend, King Arthur's Hole, H-O-L-E, and charge people a quid of time to come and have a look at it. Now, this little beauty here, are you ready? Yeah. Let me get my fingers under it. Mm, yeah. There's a reason why me and Big Al are here in the first place. Because it was lifting this lintel up on his own that Rex over there actually done the damage to his neck. Rotate it one more. Yep. I see. Put it into position. All right. And back to the front, Al. It's got to come out to the front. Got it? Yeah. Pass up the lever. It's a bit old. That looks pretty good. How's that look to you, Rex? Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. That's another job done. This here is the old door that came off this opening here. Now, I was rather hoping that there was going to be some old fittings on it, but it, as you can see, it's well past its sell-by date, and it wouldn't have been any good if it was not rotten, because Tommy's now lifted the lintel height on that, so I've got to make a new door for there. It'll be in the same style as that, legend braced, and we're going to be going off of these old pins that are already set into the granite. So I'll take a measurement of that, and we'll get another one made for it. Now, this may seem obvious, I hope so. This was once a gatepost. And these hooks, these metal hooks here, which once held the gate, are now in the way of the stone, because we've turned this into a lintel. So I'm going to just nip these off with the angle grinder. Goggles. Perfect. Got a door to make for the pigsty now. Uh, it's the old style button bead, but we're going to be rebating the boards for the door over each other. I'll show you what I mean by the little in end grain drawing. I'm no artist, but what we're going to be doing is taking out the rebate like so. That's on the face. And then on the back, we're going to be taking a rebate out like so. And then the boards are going to slide together, forming a weather seal joint. And then over the top, we're going to put a mould down there, and that's called a butt bead mould. You know what, when I was 16, about to leave school, my headmaster came up to me and he said, Tommy Walsh, he said, you will end your days breaking stones. You know what? He may have been right.
I've rebated and butt beaded all the boards. Now we're just laying them together, and you can see how one's dropping underneath the other down there. They just slide under each other like so. And then the last one comes in like so. Try and get them all, all roughly lined up, even though they're going to be cut to length. Then what I'll do is drop a cramp on here. You just pull all the joints up, but you don't over tighten it because it's outside, it's already going to swell up. So if you over tighten it, all that'll happen is when the wood swells up, it'll dome out the face. So that's them all together like that. Now, this is one of the rails that's going to be going behind the door itself. What you want here is about a 40 millimetre gap from there to there, and the same on the other side, and that allows you to cut off the side of the door, because we're going to be fitting to rough edge stonework, and then you don't have to be cutting through this as well. Now, it's time to cut it, and we can get it assembled. Right, that's the last ledge cut. Just slide it into position. Now we can nail it. Hey, mate, how you getting on? Done, that's all finished. Yeah. Good. Oh, that's a pretty good door, mate. You made a good job of that. It would have been perfectly in keeping with the piggery, wouldn't it? Yeah, it should last a few years, shouldn't it? Trim it a bit, put yeah. the furniture on. Yeah. So what else we got left to do? Loads. Oh. More stonework. Casements. Casements for a little window up there. Glazing. Glazing. Oh, and of course the roof. Oh, that I'd little job. Have a look at that. <laughs> I wonder what this looks like up against it. Well, we're not going to finish it all now. Big Al, we're right in the middle of Bodmin Moor, deep in the heart of Cornwall. We're emerging from the mist, our feet are soaking wet. <laughs> it's day four of our challenge, and our challenge is to restore an old piggery. Now look at that Al, it's a bit different to when we started, isn't it? Well, it's just a heap of rubble before, really. Well, it's a heap of stone now. Well, at least it's stuck together at the top. <laughs> <laughs> now what we've got left to do, we've got to put the rest of that gable on on the front end, fill in the two sides. Put the roof on. Yeah. Finish the windows. Door. Door. Roof light. Yeah, so by the end of the day, this should look a bit different. Well, let's hope so. Otherwise, we will be in trouble. We better start work. First order of the day, though. A nice hot cup of tea. Thank you. As soon as you volunteered, you can make it. Now, I'm not trying to take on Rolf Harris with my artistic work here, but what I'm trying to do is show you what I've got to set out for the roof. This is the outer walls of your house floor walls now the top of your walls you have a wall plate like so and then you've got your rafters coming up and down like so there's your ridge there and your rafters coming down here what i've set out on this board is it in full scale so we'll shove that out the way and we'll show you how you've done it on here this is the ridge that comes this way. This is the rafter, it goes all the way down and then sits onto the wall plate and this is sat on the wall. Now, I've pre-cut some of these just to give you an idea that where we've got the wall plate down here, look, and the ridge at the top, that is going to be the line of the rafter. So, 
that's the wall plate. And this little thing here is what they call the bird's mouth. And this hooks over the edge of the wall plate and then you fix down through this into the wall plate which forms the rigid fixing at the bottom. Now we're going to be putting the ridge in later so we need to be putting a temporary strap to stop these from spreading once they're on the roof. So I'm just going to screw these on. While Al's doing his stuff, I've come to Delabo in North Cornwall to visit the amazing slate quarry. And I might just bring back a little present for Rex while I'm here. There's some piece of rock up there, isn't it, huh? Well, this is George Hammond, who's the boss of the Delabo slate quarry in northern Cornwall. Do we have a bit of history about the quarry? I mean, how long has it been running? Been operating for well over 600 years. There's been a quarry on this spot. And it's been commercially operated, selling goods all over the country for since Elizabethan days. It's Elizabeth I, that is, Tommy. How do you manage to actually extract the stone from the quarry? Do you have to blast it? We used to blast it until about the 1990s, but now we wire saw it out, which is a combination of drilling holes and uh, then pulling a big wire through the holes and cutting it out like a, like a block of cheese, really. We saw about a 600 to 1,000 tonne block from the face which is quite huge. 600? That's enormous! Yeah, and, and then after isolating it, then we used a large rock hammer or construction hammer to actually split it up. Now, the slates themselves, are they still cut by hand? They're still... they're sawn by machine, but they're actually split and dressed by hand, yeah. It's amazing, and they can't really have a, a machine that does that? There's no machine that will split those slates, no. Not Delaware slate, anyway. I've come up with an idea to maybe get a present for Rex, a surprise present that we're going to attach to his piggery. And I don't know whether you'll be able to help me. You yeah. might be. If I explain it to you, I've decided to have an engraved slate sign made as the finishing touch to the pig shed. Now, this is George. This is the man who's actually going to do the engraving. He's going to show us how to do it. Now, this is... A certain type of slate you have to use for engraving? I do, yes. Probably mon monumental plaque stone, yes. Right, can you show us how we're going to do it? You're going to transfer this onto here? I will, yes. Show us how we do it then, George. King Arthur's Hole. First stage done. What next? Right, over to the sandblast machine now. Come on in, let's get it done. This is the pressure treated timber that we're using on the roof. Now when you're doing any structural timber work, look down the timber like this and it will sometimes have a hump or a hollow. And when you're putting the timbers on for the roof, you always want them hump up, all of them. If you don't, you'll have one down, one up and then the roof will be all shapes. Very last piece. I've had enough of building out of hardcore. That's what this is like. You have a straight side or a straight end to it. Right, I've had me winch for the day. That's the last piece in. Now we can go on with the roof. Where's he gone, Al? I'm here. About, about ready for doing this roof. Yeah, what are you doing up there then? I'm just surveying what you've done, making sure it's all right. Spin it up now. All the trusses are assembled. We've marked out the wall plates. And we've got to, what we're going to do is screw four of these trusses in position on here 
and then lift it up there. Now the reason we're doing it on the floor is because we're a little bit short of scaffolding and to keep it lightweight but still structurally strong to lift up we're only putting four on and then we'll infill with all the other rafters when these are all fixed. And we'll fix the roof light at the same time. So over here then, where you've got these stones here, are you going to tie the other way or is it just tying over the joints as in brickwork? What you've got to try and do to be really clever is to actually bond over the, the previous joint yeah. and also tie it in with what we call a header stone. Right. Same as you get a header brick. Yeah. So every so often you have to turn them so that everything's tied in. So you've got your front course bonding in with your back course? Yeah, roughly. This is only rough work, so you know, as long as you get the occasional tie-in as you go up each course, you'll be fine. Right. I mean, it's two foot thick, it ain't going to go anywhere. I mean, the problem we've got is actually finding the right sort of stone for it. You know, the right size and thickness. You is know? that a cue for me to go and find some more? Well, I've, either that or you're going to grow there like a little leprechaun sitting on the enemy brickwork, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's very hot, you know. And sometimes he's enough to try the patience of Job. But he's a good egg, actually, because he keeps, I keep sending him out to do the difficult task of sorting out the stone. What I've got here is one of the corner pad stones that's going to be going up by the lintel that goes over the doorway, but it's a little bit too big, so rather than hunt around for another pad stone, what I'm going to do is just take out a corner like this. It's virtually impossible to do it with a chisel, and we're up against time, so I'm going to cut it with a diamond blade. Not heavy, honest. There you go, sunshine. Spot on. That's both inner skins of brickwork finished now because we've had to do it in two skins because of the rafters. Now, what we have to do, we are now ready for the roof construction to come in in one piece. But they have to be fitted to wall plates. So what we've done, reversed it. We fit the wall plates to the roof construction, so we've put the whole thing in one. All I've got to do now is put a bed of mortar on here. That's for under the wall plate, so any unevenness will be levelled out. Up we go, nice and high. That's it, slowly, slowly. We've roped in some of Rex's friends to help position the roof. Now, if we just easily rest a minute so Al can get round the other side. Down a bit, mate. Down a bit. Down a bit. You'll do. I'll get up on top. You going to come right. up on top? Can you get it over that? All right. <clears throat> Easy. Bring yours down, Al. Yeah. Go to you a bit. Elliot, you too. Got to come to you. Elliot, whoa, 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 hold on. Up a bit your side. Lift it right, that's it. Over towards Mark. That's it. Right. That's it, now down gently. That's perfect, lovely. I think that's, that's it for the day. I think we're gonna call it a day. That's a fair day's work, that is. It is, and uh, because you've made such a good job of this, Oh, don't tell me. Yeah, I'm going to treat you to a nice, long, cool pint of beer. Any particular preference? I'll have to. Don't say. We mustn't advertise. A bit of the brown stuff. Oh, a bit of the brown stuff. Come on, it. I'm sure you haven't been on it already? Yeah. Last day of the challenge, and have we got a hurdle to climb? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the pun. A rickety one like that. <laughs> now, we're rebuilding the piggery and turning it into a workshop for Rex. Now, Rex's daughter, Becky, may be a touch premature in stripping out this old caravan because we haven't finished the workshop now. We've Loads still got the to roof do. to do. Loads. I don't know whether we're going to finish it tonight. Well, it hasn't changed, Dale. No little fairy's been and finished it for <laughs> us. Uh, let's see what we're going to do. Here, would you get the rest of the tools out and knock me up the gauge? Yeah, I'll do the gauge first. Yeah, yeah. Now, what we've got to do to finish this... It's the last day of the challenge. We've got to put the rest of the joists, uh, the uh, rafters in, 
On the other side, we've got to put in the roof light with a couple of trimmers. Then we've got to put in a little porthole window at the back. We've got to glaze these big windows that we've put in, including making and hanging one of the sashes. We've got to hang the door. Then we've got to felt and batten the roof, pull the slates on, then put the ridge on, all by the end of today. By then, by the end of the day, you'll probably see us both lying out on the floor, completely exhausted. Oh, my goodness. Say, Tom. Yeah? Surely we're going to finish this. Finish this? Can you see any of them flying? They might have been resident here once, but I can't see any flying around here. What, pigs? <laughs> <laughs> Finishing this in a few hours. We'll certainly try. I should imagine by now they've started to feel a bit worried. Day five and the roof's not on. <laughs> yeah, under pressure. Definitely. <laughs> and with the heat as well, it's, uh, I'm surprised tempers aren't framed by now. <laughs> It's quite sad getting rid of the caravan, in a way, because we, we lived in it as a home for five years plus. Um, it was a bit of a, a squeeze, a bit of a cramped home, but it was, yeah, at 13, 14, it was a bit of an adventure as well. It brings back memories, you know, some bits you'll, you'll pull a box away from the wall and it's like, oh, I remember that picture being there and, and, you know, remember having the different kinds of soups on the wood burner all the time. It's... But it also, they're so dilapidated now, it'd be great to get rid of them. Oh, it's going to be brilliant when Dad, for Dad when it's finished. His tools in the caravan, if you've, you've seen it, it, they're overflowing, they're everywhere, and he'll finally be able to get it sorted out. It'd be a nice little hideaway in the winter for him. <laughs> it'd be brilliant. This is the roof light. It comes as a kit with very good instructions. It's easy to put together and very simple to fit. And it brings in the most fantastic light into any room. Well, that's all the battening done. Now for the slating. Right, when you're recovering a roof, it's very important to set out correctly. First of all, you're going to need what they call an undercloak, which is, we turn them sideways, like that, fix them along there. Then, when you come to do your, fix your slates, Get them up there. That's that. Uh, right. So that's your undercloak. I'll take this one out for now because you don't really need that one. But that's your undercloak. So the reason for that is where this little gap is, that one underneath takes the water off. Okay. Now they're all pre holed and what you have to work out is that the next covering slate actually sits over the hole but the top of the slate also must rest on the next band. And that's how it works out. So you take the measurements by setting out like that. And I'll just show you this little sequence and it should explain it. So then when you come to do your next one, fix your next one, that fixes over there, sits over those. You've got nice lap so no rain can blow under. The two fixing holes are centre of that batten, and the top of the slate is supported by that. And that's how it works. That's the setting out. It's very, very clever, actually. The fixings that we're using, these are inch and a half copper nails. They're a little bit dearer than the aluminium ones, but you can use either copper nails or aluminium nails for slating. Do not use galvanised nails, because if, number one, galvanised nails are made of steel, so 
in a roof, wet conditions, they're going to rot. And number two, if ever you get a damaged slate and you want to pull it out with a slater, a special slating tool, so with these, the slate will just cut through the nail and won't damage the roof. Whereas if it's a galvanised nail, it just can't pull it out. It normally rips the roof apart. While Al and I tile the roof, Rex's mates are all lending a hand and a digger to level the area around the pig shed. got to go and with a fresh layer of gravel and some tidying up it's all starting to look pretty good. I'm afraid we're going to have to come clean, and we are. I'm afraid we are. This was a challenge just a bit too far for us, wasn't it? Yeah. There are certain elements of this job that we didn't complete, not in the five days. But what you have to remember is what this was like before we started. Absolutely, Tom. And all the problems that we had throughout the whole job, everything going wrong, yep. one of those weeks. But other than that, are you happy with what we've done? Very happy. It looks very pretty. I mean, it's pretty is a funny word for a building, but it's very pretty. Top to bottom, slates look good, door looks good, looks good, windows look great. We want to give you a special surprise. A little present from me, Big Al, and all the crew. This is something we've had specially designed for you. With a very special <laughs> present. Wonderful. So on behalf of me and Big Al and all the crew, we'd like to present that to you. Wonderful. <laughs> I like that. And I'm sure you'll find a suitable place to position it. I will. Well, indeed, yeah. Enjoy. So from me and Big Al, till the next time. Cheerio. Cheers. It's been good fun. You know, I liked all the people that, that's been on the crew. And uh, Tommy's banter. Um, and I've learned a fair few things from him, and, uh, and Alan the same. So it's been a very different week for me, you know, normally being almost a recluse, and uh, now being in the centre of a whole bunch of happenings. I think the biggest problem we had in a week, uh, which was not insurmountable, was when it was the lifting of the gatepost, which was going to become a lintel, and uh, it dropped, cracked in two. But when I saw it, I was fairly pleased, because it was a, it was a really neat crack found a use for that already is going to be a step up to the garden from the pig shed so it's all worked out in the end working with stone is it's a long process it's not like working with bricks you can just pick them up and pile them in pile them in and everything's square and everything meets and matches but working with stone you've got to see the see the shape in the stone when it's on the ground and then you've got to see what it's going to be all in the same eye if you like you've got to have an eye for stone but it's it's come right in the end a couple of weeks later and Rex's builder friend has put the finishing touches to the renovated pig shed. Now, I'd say it's worthy of King Arthur himself.